like uh... right so this is called this is called tata for now no it isn't it's called tar very much this is tar very much by sarah johnston this is the pilot episode i've always wanted to work with children make it be on the next page fade in interior staff room an infant school morning day one eight thirty sam 40 smart casual dress hair still damp laptop on lap types quickly a script visible on the screen head teacher enters 49 Dresses like she's 19, in sincere tone of voice, shatters the silence. You're in early. Sam jumps and shuts her laptop on her finger. Sorry. <laughs> I, I I disappeared off Zoom. Uh, where am I? It's your first oh, line. Yes, yes I've got it. I've got You're it, on yeah. it. Okay. Yes. Yep. I was really organised this morning. Thought I'd get myself ahead. Interior, kitchen, dining room, Sam's house, morning, day one, 7.45. Sam downs her tea, runs upstairs, bumps into five-year-old Eliza at the top of the stairs, clutching some Playmobil. Remember Daddy's taking you to school today, sweetheart. Make sure you're ready to go when he says. What time do we leave? I told you last night. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. 8.40. Why is Daddy taking me? A few beats while Sam brushes her teeth really quickly. I've got an early staff meeting. Eliza walks slowly downstairs with Sam close behind her. Richard, 45, smartly dressed and coiffured, retail manager and digital addict, leans against lounge doorway, stares at iPad. Eliza sits in the middle of the stairs with her toys. Sam weaves around her. I'll pick you up after school. Eliza grabs Sam's leg an annoying ploy to stop her leaving. Help. Sam stands on one leg as she transfers her lunch, water bottle, thermal mug, and, <clears throat> thermal mug and keys from the floor into her bag. Help. Eliza giggles, lets go suddenly, and Sam wobbles a bit. Eliza goes back to her toys. Sam puts her coat on, puts Eliza's water bottle into her school bag, kisses them both goodbye, grabs her notebook and pen from the lounge and puts them in her bag. Have a lovely day. Bye. Sam leaves. Eliza stops playing and looks at Richard, who is still glued to his iPad. Interior staff room, morning, day one, 8.35, continuous. I hope you're not going to be claiming overtime. No, but thanks for the reminder. I need to hand in my timesheet. Sam rummages in her bag, pulls out a folded up timesheet. She unfolds it, exposing a mess of amended entries. Hmm. I might need to explain some of this. Sam exits the staff room and goes to the office. The three office staff are huddled around the photocopier. A woman clutching a folder the other side of the main security door peers through a sliding window into the office. GCSE certificates, A-levels, degrees and the rest. The woman opens the folder and counts out more certificates. I mean, sir, particularly. Certificates, learner, 100 meters, intermediate advance, athletics five star awards, three of those, gymnastics BAGA, two, three, and four, judo certificates for yellow, orange, and green belts, cycling proficiency. The woman empties the contents of an envelope onto the desk. Guide badges, brownie badges. Everything she passes through is laid out on the photocopier. The office staff all have a nose at her childhood achievements. No, look. Country dancing badges. I got that one. Or was that my sister? I can't remember now. I definitely got my hostess badge. I remember scolding my dad's arm with a cup of tea and I took it in, uh, a cup of tea. I took him in bed. He said I needed to hurry up and get my first aid badge. The woman rummages in a folder, searches for something. Oh, sh sugar. Sorry, I've forgotten my first aid certificate. Uh, don't worry, we've uh, all got the important ones. Oh, okay. The bell goes for the start of the school day. Can I just quickly explain this to someone, please? A few beats as the office staff carry on being nosy. What did you get for a GCSEs? You didn't get many guide badges. <laughs> Let me know if you can't read it. Sorry. Uh, new relief, midday supervisor. Sam steps outside the office and Natalie, 
the special educational needs <clears throat> coordinator, 45, overweight, flamboyantly dressed, pounces, Sam jumps. Morning, Sam. Could you pop into my cupboard? I just need a word before you start. Natalie leads the way, turns around suddenly. Sam jumps again. Have you signed in today? Yes, I got here early. Just checking. Sam follows Natalie into a very small office. Natalie sits. I should let Steph know I'm here first. I, I've just been held up with... No, 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 I'll be quick. I just need to let you know that there's a new boy in Steph's class who might need a lot of help. All you need to know is he is ESN and ESL and might have ADD or ASD. We'll probably put him in an ILP, but maybe not until Christmas. Any questions? Sam looks bamboozled by the acronyms. Does he know his ABC? Natalie looks blank. His alphabet. Oh, doubt it. Okay, well, thanks for the head up. No problems. Sam walks briskly through the hall. The head teacher plugs stuff in, looks confused. Sam, before I forget. Head presses a button. The screen above her head starts to slowly lower in front of her. She stands still. We need to book you on to a pediatric first aid course. Right. Okay. There are two coming up. I've written the dates down for you. If you let me know ASAP which one you can do, that'd be fab. Sam bends sideways to maintain eye contact. Do you have the dates to hand? I left them in the classroom on a post-it. We've got Harvest Festival Assembly first thing, though. Okay, I'll let you know. The head teacher straightens up, disappears from view. Sam walks to class, hangs her stuff up. The reception teacher, Steph, 27, rarely smiles, always immaculate, but indiscreet when talking about pupils, looks up briefly, then looks back at the kids. All right, everyone, line up quietly at the door for assembly, please. You took your time. I thought you'd forgotten to come in. Sorry, I got delayed at the office and then with Natalie. About the new boy. Steph indiscreetly points down over the head of the child in question. Sam nods subtly in acknowledgement. And then the head stopped me to ask me about dates for a first aid course. Steph hands Sam the post-it note with the dates on, then points to a large basket of food. In demand. Could you carry this? The basket is heavier than Sam expects, sending her slightly off balance as she tries to pick it up. Just dump it at the front with the others, then keep an eye on the chatterboxes and the fidgets. Steph walks to the front of the line and exits. The kids follow. The line disappears, leaving Sam daydreaming in the classroom. Interior, a primary school hall, morning. Day naught. We plough the, sc <laughs> the field and scatter is beautifully sung by a disciplined junior school congregation in smartish 80s clothes, no uniform. Sam is the one with slightly wet hair. Interior, school hall, morning, day one. Conkers, we're collecting conkers, is being belted out, tunelessly, by the chosen few at the front as Steph's class enters late. The singers sit down when finished. The vicar, late twenties, but younger looking and more naive looking, stands in front of the children, a sea of red school jumpers. He claps his hands, smiles serenely as he waits for the last children to settle. Good morning, everyone. It is lovely to be here and to be sharing your Harvest Festival with you. Sam appears with the box of Harvest Festival offerings. She aims for the only space near the vicar's feet, but accidentally drops it on his foot. Now, does anyone know what the Harvest is? A few children put their hands up. Yes, you and the red jumper. A pub! No, not quite. OK, has anyone been blackberry picking? Vicar points to a year two boy with his hand up. And what did you do with your blackberries? I threw them at my brother, but I was going to say my dad said when he was a teenager, blackberry picking was stealing mobile phones. A beat. OK, harvest is the gathering in of the fruit and vegetables that have grown in the fields and orchards over spring and summer. A busy time for farmers. But as you aren't farmers, I can see you've all been busy harvesting from your kitchen cupboards to donate items to the local food banks, which will go to the people less fortunate than yourselves. So on their behalf, I would like you to say a big thank you. The vicar moves over to Sam's basket and examines the contents. I'm sure that these tins of soup and noodles will warm someone up, as will the comfort of a cup of tea and a biscuit. 
As he lifts a packet of biscuits up, some fall out of the already open packet. Half the contents is missing. Shall we sing another song? Sam scans the class and spots a child eating a biscuit and passing one to a friend, pockets bulging. Steph is checking her nails, so Sam holds her hand out to the biscuit thief. Uh, all of them. The child hands over the biscuits from his hand, the ones from his pocket, and spits out a half-chewed one into Sam's hand. Sam sits back down, holds the soggy pile in her hand. Interior, reception classroom two, morning, day one, ten o'clock. Simon, the only male TA, 49, fashion victim, chancer, cheeky grin, is at the back of the classroom, sticking work into books. His mobile is on the side, a message shows on the screen. See you at break time. Simon types a reply. Meet me in the usual place. Winking emoji. Interior, year one classroom, <laughs> morning, day one, 10.01. Karen, 43, tall, slim, well-spoken, a fashion victim, a flirt and a snob, opens a drawer in her desk, puts her hand sanitizer on, quickly types a text message on her phone, shuts the drawer. Interior, reception classroom two, morning, day one, 10.03. Simon receives a text reply. It's a date. Interior TA staff room, morning break time, day one, 10.40. Sam enters, sits down, gets her coffee and phone out. Other TAs, Jackie, 52, black British, looks bored, monotone voice. Jenny, 32, Czech, blunt manner, slim, very vain. And Megan, late 30s, wears political slogan t-shirts and badges, always looks confused. All stare at mobile phones except Diane, 56, well-spoken, know-it-all, colourful clothes and shoes is by the kettle, choosing a herbal tea. Me and Paul watched Heartbeat on UK Gold last night. I'd forgotten how good it was. Do you know what I really miss, though? Juliet Bravo and the Gentle Touch. What are they? Deodorants? No. They're police detective dramas from the 80s. They were... I wouldn't mind a Gentle Touch from that fit blonde guy on Love Island. Can't wait for tonight's episode. Now, have you seen the sports coach this term? I'm not staying in the classroom listening to slow readers during PE. He's perks of the job. What made you decide to become a teaching assistant, Sam? Sam takes a bite of a cereal bar to give herself thinking time. Interior, Sam's house, night, a few months before. Sam and Richard stare at a credit card statement on a laptop. We'll go halves on it this month, and I'll get a part-time job till I can make a writing pay. Richard gives her a look, raises his eyebrows. Might be an idea. Give me till next summer. If I haven't got anywhere, I'll get a full-time job. Richard walks out of the room. Interior, staff room, morning break time, day one, 10.45. I've always wanted to work with children. I'm sorry, where am I? Receptionist enters the staff room and hands Sam an A4 book. Sam, can you take this over to Colin in his bungalow? It's his book of jobs. He's supposed to have it first thing, but we've been too busy, actually. Could you do it every Monday? Thanks. Receptionist exits. Sure, no problem. Interior school corridor. <laughs> Morning break time, day one. Simon walks up the narrow corridor. Checks no one's around, enters the broken toilet. Karen follows suit. Interior, Colin's bungalow, morning break time, day one. Colin, the caretaker, 60s, Scottish, scruffy, grey-haired, puts his feet up, lights a very small pipe. Sam knocks on the door. Colin jumps, puts the pipe out, flaps his hand to disperse the smoke, sprays mouth freshener into his mouth and the air, answers the door. And that's, and that's the end, isn't it? Mm. Um, okay, I'm just reading what the log line said. Uh, okay. Um, who wants to go first? I presume this is an episode for a teleseries? Y yeah, yes. I'm just reading that now. It says here... Uh, um, 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 uh... At the very beginning, it says pilot episode. Pilot wow. episode, yes. Um, uh, I'm struggling to. I'm struggling with this. We've got ten, ten, ten minutes in, and I'm still not sure what's really happening. Um, 
insofar as I, yes, I get it. It's, it's a school and yeah. a school. Yeah. But what I'm struggling with is the log line says, Sam wants to make it as a writer, but for now has to fake enthusiasm as a teaching assistant in an infant school with a five-year-old daughter in the mix. Not as easy as she'd hoped. With a five-year-old daughter in the mix, will she ever be able to hit a deadline? But in those first 10 minutes, I didn't get any indication whatsoever that she's trying to be, a, that she's struggling as a writer. Well, not until the last but one page. The first thing we see is her, but um, it has to be really clear, I think, on the laptop that it is a script. And I don't know yeah. how strongly that would come across for people. Yeah. I, I wondered watch. whether we needed a scene, a little tiny scene of, of her really getting into writing at some yeah. point. Just um, that, that because that's her driver and we're not really seeing it drive her, are we? Yeah, that's I the th thing, I think. Yes, yeah. that's I think the, the, the thing. Fo the focus is on the wrong part of her life at the moment. Yeah. Yes. We, we I need would... to see that. Sorry, John. Yep. No, no, I, I was sorry. I interrupted you. I would suggest the scene where husband and wife are discussing credit card that she's typing away while they're talking. But Therefore, you see, even that's not going to indicate that she wants to be a script writer because mm -hmm. that anybody could be typing anything. She could be answering her emails, you know. You almost need to start off in a completely different place, different scene, the script that she's writing. <coughs> what is the script she's writing? Let's recreate, let's have a page, yeah, a minute of the script that she's writing because that's in her head. <clears throat> Mm. Yeah. And then come out of that to see it appearing on the page as she's typing it. And, and then she's in the school have her husband room. say, and then having her maybe say, oh, my God, look at the time. You know, can you, can you, yeah. I need to, you know. Or, or even for it to be that her mind is wandering in a really boring class and bang, she's back in the room with exactly. some kid I with think bogeys. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Something so, yeah. so that we know that she really wants to be a writer and this is how it's, you know. Yeah. That would be great when her husband's talking about something quite boring or her daughter's just making her play a quite dull game and she's sort of going, um, she gave him a strange look. <laughs> and she's doing all these different bits of, you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you could really it. play with this. It could be mm. really good. It could be fun, that. couldn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She toyed with the gun in her pocket. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know. Um, um, I just wanted to say, please name your characters unless they're so random and fleeting that if you're going to give them lines to say they kind Actors of wait, are very happy and they, they kind of wait a name. i'm sure everybody else does too directors yeah. and folk yeah, yeah. i think name. i think technically the writing is is good it's, yeah. it's you know it's, they obviously know what they're doing yeah but it's it's that we need to be grabbed early on because i was i was thinking the same as, as you as we were reading through i was saying when's something going to happen because yeah. I was thinking, if we're 10 minutes in, what's going to keep people watching this? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, at the moment, we're kind of waiting for, okay, okay. okay. When do we get the payoff? Okay. Yeah. How, how, how long are you going to get, are you going to keep people before something happens? So I think yeah. you need it up front. Yeah. You know. Yeah, at the moment, oh, it's, yeah. it's a bit like the, the, the BBC thing, Doctors, set in a school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, it's very proficient, but you're quite often watching it going, "Well, I could do the vacuum cleaning." Yeah, because <laughs> we've yeah. got quite a lot of fairly unlikable people we're meeting in a row. I mean, I, I think that they are described with a lot of characteristics each person, and most of them aren't very um, nice. And they might be perhaps slightly cartoonish. I don't know, but um, I'm just thinking that unless we have some fire lit under it, um, would we stick around for all these like unpleasant teachers and heads and office workers and TAs and everything like that? I'm I'm not sure that. Yeah, I think I think as a pilot, it it needs to to grab us much much more than it does at the moment. Yeah, especially... I, I, I can't imagine it getting through commissioning at the moment. No, as I you think... say, with yeah. it being pilot, we're ten minutes in now. If it's a half hour show. We're already a third of the way through it. If it's an hour show, we're a sixth of the way through it and still nothing has happened. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think Sarah can definitely write. I think yeah, there's definitely. no, no oh, question of that, is yeah. there? No, but it's, no, it's no, just, no. yeah, it's, it's just about kind of um, intriguing us and um, piquing our interest and luring us into into the world of, of Sam and, and her and her, you know, sort of fire for writing. I think we need to yeah. see that. Definitely. What do you think, Erin? 
Well, I was, I'm just taking in everything that you guys are saying. I, I think it has the potential to be very funny too, but I also think if you're a writer, like I'm, I'm, I'm a writer before an actor. I write everywhere. Everything's a story. Everything's a script. So no matter where you are, like she's in the cupboard with the lady. When she leaves, she could be like, she pulled her into the cupboard, you know, like and typing mm-hmm. into her phone. Like mm-hmm. every like talking <clears throat> to yourself in the car and working stuff out. Like just all sorts of little things that that you know because that I think like you're saying that would bring the story in because she seems to be kind of more of like the straight man with all these crazy people around her. You right? could almost do a um a flea bag with it. You yeah, could like, almost do a to the, yeah break the fourth wall. You could almost. Or, yeah fourth um uh voice almost like a a voiceover or something there's also a part two where i was the most intriguing thing to me was it appeared that i thought before they went to the vicar there was like a flashback but then i'm like maybe this wasn't a flashback and i was like it might be interesting to kind of see because they're talking about all this stuff and, and sometimes creative people have like ADHD and things and they don't know. And like, she's always late and her hair's always wet and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, does she hate this job or does maybe she have like an undiagnosed ADHD or something? So she's struggling to like find that focus to, to, you know, and being a writer is hard. I mean, you, you're, you know, you're, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, is there I like a, a, de- a denominator or a reason or something that might connect things that I thought might be really interesting if that was a flashback and like again she has wet hair she's not ready for school or whatever do you guys know what I'm talking about yeah, or did yeah. I yeah, no no absolutely no, 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 no. Yeah. no I think yeah. we're just we're just thinking yeah <laughs> I, I think um yeah, that that would be that would be an interesting line of approach yeah is it just that she's you know is, is her thing just that she's chronically chaotic or is there something else going on mm. yeah. you're right i do think that is a flashback that yeah it is but it's thing, not mentioned as it, yeah but it's not mentioned as a flashback i know we've got the time but that's not enough no yeah. no we need it to be yeah we plowed the, the fields and scatter that was definitely a kind of from when i was at school type him which yeah, i'm sure yeah. they don't have anymore should, should um, i write, read out my notes a minute angela if you yes, like do. i've written a few yes, things do. down when i looked through earlier um I, I was not quite sure what it was and who it was for. I mean, I think we are all interested in writers and writing, but apparently, you know, a lot of people get very put off by things about writers writing about writers and writing. So um, I was just quite curious about who it was for, you know, what kind of slot it might fit into on, on television, you know, whether it be sort of um, that you're kind of wanting uh, like people who'd be Sam's age or, you know, who it would be for and you know, whether the children come in as characters very much and just that whole thing about getting, um, you know, getting sort of um, permission for children to work and things, just practical stuff, I was wondering. Um, I did also wonder, because it hasn't come up really so far, as far as I can see, but it said that it was about, you know, it was set sort of during the time when we were all beginning to come back from lockdowns and the school would be closing, would be opening, would be, you know, things be changing all the time. And I just wondered again whether the appetite for lockdown-based things is there or whether we're going to need to wait a longer longer ago so it becomes sort of retro and yeah. kind of do you remember when mm. um you know whether people would just pig sick of you know things that refer to it i'm not sure um i did wonder about why the ladies in the office were taking out all the women's why she had to bring all her certificates of like everything she'd done as a child i was curious about that they had this weird sci-fi effect for me something you know, veered off somewhere else and i thought that's interesting mm. you know they're all being spied on um she says that um, one of the, um, it might be, it's not Steph, it's the other woman, Natalie, says um, ESN. And I think ESN, unless I've got it completely wrong, is educationally subnormal, which um, I looked it up. I was so curious because I thought, I haven't heard that in a long time. And apparently it was taken out of usage in 1981 and replaced by special educational needs, which makes sense. So it could be that it's back to front written. Um, and uh, I think we need to say, yeah, that scene is a flashback. We've said that. Um I felt that the characters were slightly written as value judgments. And I wonder whether it's hard to write characters like that when we kind of disapprove of them and say, her, she's vain, her, she's um, snooty, or her, she's such and such. And whether we, um, whether perhaps Sarah is going to be able to find some sort of glee in writing these people, um, you know, because they're a bit archetypal perhaps at the, at the moment. But um, 
It's just a question, really. Um, and Jackie's question, when she suddenly turns to Sam and says, um, why did you decide to do this, Sam? Um, it comes completely out of the blue. It feels a little bit wrenched round and it doesn't come out of what's happened before. And I can't see why she would suddenly ask that when she's been sort of <laughs> reminiscing about the gentle touch and Juliet Bravo and all those, you know, sort of female led cop shows from the, from the ages. Yeah. Um, anything else? Um, uh, yeah, I think that, oh, just a thing when we were reading it, I was just imagining that I'm sure finances would stop this but um we talked about all her thoughts coming out and stuff like that yeah. i think she's got to have a notebook there's got to be this notebook that she's stuffing into things if she can't have the thing because that's um always a good prop but i think also just be nice if we had some degree of animation on it so her thoughts were kind of escaping Falling and she was out. having to try and <laughs> pack them back in her head or her bag or whatever i wanted to sort of scribble on it in a way so that we could see all the writing and the words and things popping about so visually it's shown anyway that's that's me i was just I'm just trying Screen. to find. Um, hmm. I did see quite a bit of humour in it. I mean, the one that stuck with me was they're in a school, the children are all in uniform, and the vicar says, Oh, the, the mm. child in the red jumper. <laughs> you know, yeah. That made me giggle. <laughs> when I read it originally, that made me laugh out loud. Mm. I also thought now that I'm listening to everybody's comments too, it's like when you say maybe something beginning in the beginning, like maybe if you move the flashback with the wet hair to the beginning and it goes straight from, and she's writing like once upon a, or she like is in the, the chorus and she's turning around writing like once upon a mm. time or something, kids in a chorus. And then it, it flashes to present day with the wet hair and stuff like, and she's typing some script or something. You could do it so quick and it would like tie it um that might be nice yeah something yeah. like that I mean, maybe, with, I mean, the, with the flow of the wet hair mm. yeah i mean um and that this is something that carried on since you know i have one question about the whole script yeah we need the times i mean that got me the yeah, time 10 45 yeah. <laughs> is there a significance of why there's a time are we yes you're right because unless we are actually putting those as supers on the screen mm. there's yeah. no point to them is there no no, no. It, are we counting down to the bomb going off <laughs> yeah exactly so it, it really all you need to do is is a flashback i mean I guess we've got primary school hall morning day zero, and then we've got school hall morning day one. Yeah. And, and it starts at eight thirty, and then it goes back to the morning that same morning at seven forty-five. I think, um, at some point, or right, <laughs> or like, and there's then almost goes, no then way of telling that there's a day change there between the end of page six and the beginning of page seven. Well, day zero is her as a child. Yeah, you yeah. see, mm. it's not it's not clear, is it? No, no, no. not at all. It's com very confusing. That is, so I think that needs just to be sorted out. The one note of formatting that I need to say is that you only really need to, well, you only need to put the character in caps once the first time we meet them. Subsequently, they're just in upper and lower case. I notice occasionally um, it may just be an error. Uh, but occasionally a character reappears in caps and there's no need for that. That's just a quick formatting comment. Um, yeah. Uh, my my other two notes is, uh, yeah, I think I've said it already. What is the script that she's writing? Um, and if we're going to see some of that later, I think you need to pull it in earlier, as we've said. Um, I would be interesting to... In Yes, I pick up on everything that you've said, Emma, about I think there's too much information about the characters by a long way, actually. Mm -hmm. the, the, the general rule of thumb is one descriptor. You know, so Sam, 40s, um, I know, flaky or something. You know, it's like a... It's yeah. like a or together yeah. or you know it's a, and and you definitely i think you should really really steer away from saying things like overweight 
or uh, has black, a mono, monotone voice, or yeah. you know, any of that, yeah. because <clears throat> whilst you might see things in your head, the director and casting and whoever may see it differently. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and plus, it's it's it kind of makes me feel a bit. Ooh. Um, to see that. Uh, other than that, um, yeah. Oh, there was one thing I've written down: MC's backstory. And I'm assuming backstory? MC's backstory, the main character's backstory. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, uh, sorry, yeah. And I'm assuming that we're going to find out a little bit more about that as we go along, um, because if we don't, then what's her driving force behind? You know, yeah, being yeah. a writer and you know. yeah. But anyway, but yeah, I agree. Writing really, really good. Um, the writing itself is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of potential. I feel like mm. it, I would love to see another draft of this. Like, yeah. I'm just yeah. like yeah. revisions. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's, it's got, it's got, there's something about it that's really cool. I don't, I can't put my finger on it, but I, I would, I think it's like, keep going with it. Like it's, it's mm. going to be good. Definitely. Be really good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's very okay. well. Written. I think we've only been quite critical because well we can see that you see, see that possibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the skill is there. Mm. Definitely, mm. yes. Yeah. yeah. Keep yeah. keep going at it. Um <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you guys. <laughs>